Right, welcome back. Today we're doing classes of hormones. In physiology, we're going to be talking about three types of hormones or three classes of hormones. There are steroid hormones, peptide hormones, and amine hormones. We're going to be doing steroid hormones first. There are two types of steroid hormones. There are corticosteroids and sex steroids. Corticosteroids are made in the adrenal cortex or your adrenal glands. That's how the name comes from, the cortex, in adrenal cortex, and cortical. It's kind of the same thing, same name. That's how it's named, cortical steroids are made in the adrenal cortex. Sex steroids are made in the gonads. That's where you're, basically your sex organs. Some common ones are testosterone, aldosterone, progesterone, and estradiol. Estradiol is not estrogen. They're two different things. There's a very unique property of steroids. They go right through the membrane, meaning you have that lipid bilayer, right? These steroid hormones literally just go right through it. It's able to do that. So what's going on in this picture? So you have this blue steroid looking pentagon. That's what I drew. It's pretend it's a steroid hormone. Steroid hormone. It's going to go through the lipid bilayer. It just can go diffuse right through. It does not need any receptor of any type, no channel, nothing like that. It can literally just go straight through. However, it has a barrier. It, it needs to get to the nucleus. That's its end goal. Try to get to the nucleus. There are receptors for steroid hormones in the cytoplasm. They're literally just receptors waiting there just for steroid hormones. It's reserved for them. So the steroid hormones able to bind to these receptors located in the cytoplasm. And once they're bind to the receptor, they can literally go through the nucleus, in, you know, through the membrane into the nucleus, and it's going to cause RNA transcription. Don't need to worry about that. What you need to learn worry about is that steroid hormones can go through the lipid, you know, the bilayer. It can diffuse right through. That's the one thing you need to remember from steroid hormones. Okay, let's do peptide hormones. So they are obviously made of peptides. That's how the name comes from. Peptides are a string of amino acids. So you probably heard of the amino acid list. We have, so we have like tryptophan, tri tyrosine, lysine, leucine, all those kind of amino acids, right? That's what they're made of. How they work is that ligand receptor interaction on the cell surface, just like how we've been talking about in these previous videos. So you got our little uh, peptide hormone and it binds the receptor and we get it like a cell response. So what are these hormones we're talking about? So something like ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. This is what tells your body you're hungry. Insulin right, to combat sugar, and growth hormone. So let's take an example here. So say this is a ghrelin hormone. And it binds to the receptor, and now we get hungry. That's our cell response. We're hungry now. That's how that works. Pretty simple. Now we've got amines, or amine hormones. So this is the amine functional group. This is the tertiary amine. If you ever take an organic chemistry, you'll know that the R groups can be literally anything except hydrogen. Or, yeah. So there's first degree amines, second degree amines, third degree amines. So all you really know is that it has a nitrogen center atom and th one, two, or three R groups. That's how they're, that's how they're named, is that they have this, in, that's what amine hormones have this in their structure. They're derived mostly from tyrosine, which is an amino acid. So you might be confused. Hey, is that an amino acid? You know, and should it be a peptide? Yes, but it's kind of interesting. We have two types of amines, hormones. We have catecholamines and thyroid amine hormones. Catecholamines bind to surface receptors, just like peptides. Same thing, same exact concept going on. 
pretend this would be, uh, you know, catecholamine. It would bind and you get a cell response. But we also have thyroid amine hormones. And they are just like steroid hormones. They go th right through the membrane. They basically go right through and bind to receptors in the cytoplasm. So this could be a thyroid hormone. Some examples of catecholamines are dopamine and norepinephrine. So a fun fact is, you know, dopamine is literally made from tyrosine. So is norepinephrine. That's actually the basic structure. This is why it's really important you get tyrosine in your diet. A thyroid hormone or thyroxine T4 is another example, is a, basically an example of a thyroid hormone, amine hormone. For, for amine hormones, just know that there are two types, catecholamines and thyroid amines. And they basically are hybrids, right? We have one group that can bind to surface receptors and the second one can bind to intracellular receptors. And that is basically it. All you need to know about the classes of hormones. We're gonna get more into it when we talk about the actual hormone endocrine system in detail. But this is the basic overview, easy three classes of hormones, steroid, peptide, and amine. So just a little recap, recap. Steroid, steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol, usually. And they're actually, notice the ending, Rome or ohm. A lot of them end in that uh, suffix. Not estradiol, that's different, but most of them. And they go right through the membrane, right through the bilayer, bind to receptor in the cytoplasm, and go straight into the nucleus. Peptides are made out of amino acids. And they bind to receptors, ligand receptor interaction here on the membrane. And we've got like ghrelin, insulin, growth factor. Amines are the hybrids of the two. You've got catecholamines that bind to surface receptors, just like peptide hormones. And thyroid amine hormones that bind to intracellular receptors, just like steroids. They're the hybrids of the group. And all of them can uh, have the amine functional group, basically a nitrogen surrounded by atoms, one, two, or three. Oh. All right, and that will be it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I apologize for being absent for a few days. I just needed you know, a few days to myself as a little vacation, not vacation, but I just, yeah, just got to really study and take care of myself. But anyways, I'll be back tomorrow. See you later.